Disturbing scenes on our streets, triggering calls to the wave troubleshooters, alleging patient dumping by local hospitals. Two different $2 million plus patient dumping jury verdicts recently in Kentucky caught our eye, but what really got our attention was where calls to our newsroom led us when we began following up on the complaints. This story begins December 1st at 5 p.m. with a phone call to our newsroom from a horrified University Hospital employee claiming security had just wheeled a woman all the way out to the corner of Hancock and Ali, just off hospital property, dumped the elderly woman out of the wheelchair on the sidewalk and left. Minutes later, we shot video of her, still in a soiled hospital gown and slippers, breathing hard under a blanket placed over her in 36-degree weather, her stuff in a bag next to her. The employee claimed she sees this a lot. So I started watching, and on December 16th at 7 p.m., 35 degrees outside, I record three security guards surrounding an elderly woman with a walker, slowly escorting her out of the emergency room. She can't move fast. It takes several minutes to make it all the way to the same corner of Hancock and Ali. After they have her across the street, off the hospital property, the security guards turn around and go back. When they clear, I catch up to her, and she says she can't breathe. They told me that I could not stay on the premises. Amen. Were you in there as a patient? Well, I needed to be a patient because I'm, I'm, I'm sick. What's, what's wrong with you? I've got COPD. I've got diabetes. So they wouldn't even treat you? The doctor talked to me for one minute. And they told you what? That I had to leave. What reason did he give you? He didn't give me a reason. She tells me she's homeless. Go ahead. I've got to go because I'm hurting. What, I'm in pain. I was in a car crash and it completely shattered my hip and pelvis right here. I got like 30 something screws. Matthew Haber and his mother claim a similar story. They met us in front of Wayside Mission in the spot where they say he was dumped in October. Anywhere. And they said, well, we can't find a rehab right now. Linda Haber said when Norton Hospital told her they had a room lined up for Matthew at Wayside, she checked it out. I called Wayside Christian Mission and just to confirm, and they said no, they said we, we can't do that, we can't, you know, they have beds and they help them find jobs and stuff, but we don't take medically needy people, we don't do that. And then she says she had a conference call with the hospital staff. The social worker said we're going to take him to a, a shelter, and I said which one? And they said uh, Wayside Christian Mission. And I, I said, well, I know that's not true because I called them and they don't take him. And then the lady said, uh, the social worker said, well, that's history. Let's think of something else. Hopper says the next day her son was unloaded from a transport vehicle on the curb in the rain on Jackson Street in front of Wayside. I thought they've dumped my, my garbage I have to put out to the curb. That's how I, they dumped my son, like garbage. Linda Hopper said she was in no shape to care for him at home and she died after this interview. They put all their stuff on the sidewalk over there. They dump them off over here on the sidewalk and get back in that vehicle and get out of here just as fast as they can. Wayside staffer Perry Lane helped Matthew out of the rain and says he witnesses the same kind of thing dozens of times per year from hospitals as far away as eastern Kentucky. He says they're often lied to about the medical treatment they'll receive at the shelter. What's the worst physical shape you've seen somebody <laughs> in who was dumped? This guy here was pretty bad. Paralyzed. People that can't walk that are totally relied on, on a wheelchair. Take them out, put them in the wheelchair, throw all their stuff on the and take off. Wayside's Chief Operating Officer Nina Mosley tells me it's not uncommon. She says they're not trained medically and sometimes they take patients right back to the hospitals. How can you dump people? These are human beings. How can you just dump them and leave them? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's unhuman, man. We detail these incidents with dates and times to both Norton and University Hospitals. Norton Healthcare Senior Vice President Renee Murphy responded in an email that says, In order to safeguard the privacy of patients and in compliance with HIPAA, we are not permitted to discuss specifics regarding a patient's case. There are several details to this case that may not have been communicated to you by the family. As Mr. Haber has not signed a HIPAA release of information form, we will not be able to share those details with you. 
University Hospital Public Relations Director David MacArthur replied, they appear to be working on behalf of U of L Hospital. Unfortunately, the images that were provided by WAVE do not reveal enough information to track down additional details or identify whether the individuals on either day sought care from any of our team. What is heartbreaking for U of L Health staff is that we often encounter situations where patients need assistance beyond medical care. As the community's safety net hospital, the challenges are particularly even more acute when providing health care to the unhoused population of Metro Louisville. Community resources are limited, and even when they are available, many individuals that may benefit from those resources still refuse assistance. The Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, known as EMTALA, was passed in 1986 as a federal anti-dumping law. It mandates patients who present to a hospital emergency department must undergo an appropriate medical screening examination by a physician to determine whether they have an emergency medical condition. If they do, they must be stabilized and treated, and an appropriate transfer may take place to another facility with adequate capabilities. Juries take the hospital's obligations to treat emergency patients very, very seriously. Attorney Hans Poppy knows that firsthand. He won a $2.3 million patient dumping verdict, most of that in punitive damages, after his client, who was coming to a Lexington hospital by ambulance with a cardiac emergency, was turned away and directed to another hospital. Juries don't like to punish hospitals. There aren't many verdicts in Kentucky history favoring plaintiffs in alleged patient dumping cases, but this one is interesting. A $1.5 million verdict awarded in Fayette County to a difficult patient with a history of ER visits, dumped by a hospital, rolled outside in a wheelchair with taxi fare, and hours later the man was dead of an untreated ulcer. After being reversed on appeal, another jury socked the hospital for $1.45 million. But what that tells us is if a jury hears a case and they believe that there has been an EMTALA violation where a patient has been dumped or abandoned by the hospital, they really get upset. Dude, like I'm worthless, man. We're throwaway, we're garbage, you know? Now, I was contacted this week by a police officer who worked off duty at University Hospital who says she emailed U of L Health CEO Tom Miller on March 1st about this issue and what she was witnessing. And she says she was then informed she would no longer be working there. I asked U of L about that. They say the officer was concerned about the same things they are and they're collaborating to increase community resources for the at-risk populations. As for being let go after her email, L would only say that she was employed by a third-party security service.